The Dr. Peter Center is the legacy of a young gay physician in the early 90s who had the courage to appear on CBC television once a week for two years to share his experience of living with HIV AIDS. He knew he had been fortunate. He had a supportive family, he had friends. He knew that there were many others who were not as fortunate as he was did not have that kind of support, and that's who he wanted the foundation to benefit. Before he died, he said that he wanted his foundation to provide comfort care for people living with HIV AIDS. And some of the more basic things in life, such as the nutrient-dense food that people living with HIV desperately need to stay well. I've been a member here since 97. They have a good breakfast program and a good lunch program. Giving people that kind of home style, wholesome, nutritious, meal is one of the most important parts of what we do here. Without it, I think I would have probably would have been in the same space as I was when I first started coming. I was on drugs and I didn't eat, so this place sort of gave me a little bit of hope. The differences that we see over time, when they first start to come to the center, their weight will be much less than what it should be, and maybe not just undernourished but malnourished. I think I was 125 pounds when I first started coming and now I'm close to 200. Ah. The meals make such a difference and they feel so much better about themselves. I'm six one, so they say I can carry it. It's funny how they'll come to the scales and and uh, weigh themselves and then you know have to share with everyone just how their weight is going up and how much weight they've gained over whatever period of time and their skin clears up and their wounds start to get better. It's very clear how important the nutrition part of the program is. Investing in care and support outside of the teaching hospital or the main hospital is fundamental to keep our health system viable. Individuals who receive care here at the Dr. Peter Center reduce their use of acute hospitals and it improves their quality of life. A continued investment on the type of resources that Dr. Peter's Center brings to bear uh, on the epidemic are essential to ensure that we can address this problem in a comprehensive way, in a cost-effective way, and that we keep the, the, the hospital-based care for those that truly need it and not uh, make uh, wasteful use of our resources. I'm on a cocktail. I'm on experimental drugs. I guess I'm, an, I'm a guinea pig. I can reorder that for you. Okay. Um, when do you go see Danny? Is it you? Are we with Danny now? You're with uh, Monica. Monica, yeah. Yeah. So you need to go see her soon. Yeah. Okay. And we'll top up on that, okay? I'll probably do that this week. Sometime. This week. All right. I'll call it. Up. Everything from safe storage all the way up to daily administration meds, where we can assist the client or even with their GP or HIV physician. Daily administration where they have to come every day, except from the days that unfortunately we have to be closed. The day health program is the Monday to Friday program unfortunately and ever since we opened our doors we've known that that is a gap. People are living longer and they're living more complex lives. There's a lot more care involved and more um, challenges in their lives and we try to support them with that. Because our clients are the higher risk individuals who rely on us for support in managing their medication. That weekend is critical. You just don't stop taking medication on weekends. Apart from the fact that on Monday morning people arrive here uh, really hungry. I've been a member here at the lovely Dr. Peter Center since May of 2008. I walk from the downtown east side here every day. It gets me doing about five to ten kilometers of walking every day. And this last year, it's really helped my health. Yeah, I've gained ten pounds. 
I want to come here. I mean, I want to be here every day, so I make the walk. I hate it on the weekends when I can't come. <laughs> hey, how are you? Not too bad. You know, the staff and the, the clients here, they're just wonderful. They accept you with open arms. Um, so I think it's great that, um, you know, you can walk in here and feel like you're part of, rather than walking in here and feeling like you're an outsider. Hey, buddy. How are you? Good, bud. It was great, you know, and it's not just the clients, it's not just the staff, it's like right up to the very top to Dr. Peter's mom, and, you know, she'll come over and sit down with you and listen to your story, you know, and I think that's just great for the center. I've seen a lot of people do much better since they've been coming, so it does a world of good. It's really helped me in, in a big way, you know, remain sober. Um, almost two years I haven't used crystal meth and, you know, there's like a sense of a family here at the Dr. Peter Center, you know, really keeps, really helps me keep my life together. The programs they have here are phenomenal. They, they allow you to grow. We do a lot of different things in the studio. Um, I basically try and respond to what people want to do. I'm always trying something stupid and crazy. So. I also encourage uh, participants to share their skills. Sometimes I devise a project and I'll take it around, show people at the breakfast table this is available and I try and make it as accessible as possible and have projects that are quick to do and easy to do with, uh, with pleasing results. When I first came here, uh, I knew it was, you know, for the medical uh, facilities, the uh, the extra nutrition, and and, uh, and I was being shown around, and, and uh, I think it was Diane that was showing me around, and she goes, and over here we have the music room, you can sign out a guitar if you want. Well, that's it, that's that's good, that's all I need to know, you know. <laughs> so I was in there, and ever since then, Carolyn has been my music therapist. You know, I see him every day. Whether or not we play music together every day isn't really even so important anymore. Um, there's that consistency, the deepening of how you get to know someone in a very organic and natural way. None of us share our lives in one hour sound bites with each other. We have a few minutes here, a few minutes there. You share a laugh, you share a problem. And so it's much, it's much more natural. I've had a lot of uh, traumatic situations in my life right from childhood on. So this is the real therapy for me. This keeps me happy, right? You can always dream. I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm in my 50s now, and chances of ever becoming a rock and roll star are slim, but uh, in my own little world, I get to do this, and, and this is good enough for me. <laughs> I have been here for seven years. Before I came here, I was a street kid living in alleys. The nurse here found me in a doorway, and they literally helped me get here. When I first came in, I had nothing but a dirty blanket and a backpack, and I was like underweight and malnutrition. Uh, now I'm like uh, perfectly healthy, and I'm undetectable. And I just love this place. I love the staff. They're my family. It's just such a special thing to be living here. I just can't imagine my life without the center. What do you like best about living at the Dr. Peter Center? Feeling safe. There is one problem with the Dr. Peter Center, and that's it's not big enough and clearly the need in the Metro Vancouver area far outstrips what we can do here on the corner of Comox and Thurlow in downtown Vancouver. And it actually wouldn't be appropriate for it all to be here. It's about providing this service in people's communities to make access for them far easier. 